A pleasant day to everyone. Today we're going to discuss module 3 of the subject C411, Highways and Railroad Engineering. So in this lecture, we're going to discuss the vertical alignment of roads. So it in horizontal alignment, we use horizontal curves or circular horizontal curves in designing our alignment or correcting the alignment of the roadway along its plan in vertical alignment we now use parabolic vertical curves so these curves now are used mostly to design the profile of highways in which the properties of our vertical curves would make it easier for us to lay out the alignment of the roadway in the field so the properties of a parabolic vertical curve would now include first is that the rate of change of the grade is constant. So given now the formula or the equation defining a parabolic curve, we have y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. Deriving this equation now would give us y prime dy over dx which is equal to 2ax plus b. So this one now will be the change of grid or would define the slope of our curve. And deriving again the equation for the second time, the second derivative now, y double prime or 2, d2y over dx is equal now to 2a wherein a is a constant value. Therefore, it is a constant times a constant. So, ibig sabihin, uniform yung ating rate of change of your grade in a parabola. The next property is a tangent drawn from any two points on a vertical axis of the parabola will always intersect midway between the points of tangency. So, looking now at this diagram, so if we have tangents on the parabola at any points, the intersection of the angle or of the tangents would always be measured L over 2. So, meaning, so meaning if I will take a tangent at this point and another point, their intersection will still be at will still be meeting at L divided by 2 or midway of our parabola. So next property we have the vertical offsets from the tangent to the parabola are proportional to the distances from the point of tangent C. So given this diagram, x1, h1 will be proportional to that of h2, h x2, h2. So this is now used in our offset method in determining the locations of our points on the parabola. Next we have E is if a tangent to the parabola is drawn between the main tangents, then the horizontal projection of the intercept cut off on this new tangent by the main tangents is equal to one half of the horizontal projection of the long chord of the parabola. So meaning, okay, so if this is our main tangents, and I will draw another tangent here. So the horizontal distance between the offsets or of the intercept of the tangent to the parabola is equal to L over 2. So meaning, if I will have another tangent here, Dito, tangent natin. which will be intersect a tangent that would intersect the main tangent. So this distance will be equal to L over 2 as well. So, with that, we have the current types of vertical curves. 
So we have the first one is your crest curves. And for crest curves, we have your positive to negative curve. So from a positive going up and then going down curve. So this type of curve now is a type 1 vertical curve. And then we also have other crest curves wherein we will have a negative to negative change in grid. So negative to negative, but still it is opening downwards. Then we also have positive to positive. So the change is positive to positive. So it's still opening downwards. So this two curves now is a type 3 curve. And then the second type of vertical curve is what we call your sag curve. So sag meaning it's sagging or it has a lower point or it has the lowest point. So we have here a negative, so basically for sag curves, that will be a negative to positive change in grade. So negative, so going down, and then you go up. So that's a sag curve. So this type of curve is your type 2 curve. And then other types of sag curves would include a positive to positive change in grade and the negative to negative change in grid. So as you can see, even if we have the same grid, so positive to positive, it will have an upward opening. So you should, so if the given is the same sign convention for your grids, you should always draw your Great, so that you will see how the curve will look like, like if it's opening up or opening down. Okay, so for these two types of curves, this is now what we call your type or curve. So type 1 and type 3 are crest vertical curves and type 2 and type 4 will be your sag vertical curves. So we have here a simple diagram of the parabola and its elements. So we have same as for our horizontal curves, we have our point of curvature or the beginning of the curve. And we could call this now as this is the beginning of the curve. And aside from BBC, we can also call this as the point of vertical curvature or the vertical point of curvature. Then we also have your end of the curve, or end of the vertical curve, or the point of tangency. And we can call this as the vertical point of tangency, or the point of vertical tangency. So any of this will do to rename or to name our beginning and end of curve. Then we have here the intersection of the tangents to our beginning and end of the curve the vertical point of intersection, and the distance between VPI and BVC will be given by L divided by 2, the horizontal distance. Same, the horizontal distance between VPI and EVC is also at L over 2. Then we are given here your grade 1, G1, and grade 2, G2. And since vertical curves are used to design profile of highways, then we will have the elevation of our point. So we have here EBVC and from Aditum, X will also be the elevation of point EVC. Okay, so for a vertical parabolic curve, we have the general equation following the format of a quadratic equation, which is y equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. 
and for a vertical curve, this will now be equal to 1 half rx squared plus gx plus ebbc. So following now the general form of a parabola. So 1 half r is your a, g1 is b, and the elevation bbc is our c, which are all constant values. So take note. That in this equation, y and x are arbitrary coordinates in our curve, meaning in any point or at any point in our curve, it can be solved through this equation. And then we have EBBC or our C is equal now to the elevation of the station BVC. And for R that is computed as G1 minus G2 divided by the length of the parabola. So to understand our vertical curve, or as a review for vertical curves, let us solve some examples. So we're given the station of the vertical point of intersection is at 20 plus 265. The elevation is 40 meters above sea level. We have G1 positive 4.5 and G2 negative 3.8%. We have the length of the parabola or of the curve at 250 meters. We now compute the station and elevation of the highest point on the crest in two ways. So the first one is by parabolic equation and the second one is by offset method. Okay, so we have here our diagram. So it is a crest vertical curve as we have the first grid as positive and the second grid is negative. Okay, so we are going up and then going down. So this will be our elements and our diagram that we will follow. So what we want to do is to locate now point x, y, which is our highest point in the curve. So in this diagram, we are assuming that x, y is along our midpoint or midway of the curve. But we're not yet sure if this is the location. So we want to know where is the location of this point, the x and y. So for parabolic equation, we have y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, or that is 1 half rx squared plus g1x plus bvc elevation. So for our derived constants, a, b, c, a now is equal to 1 half r, and that's equal now to g2 minus g1 divided by 2l, where that's equal to negative 0 0.038 minus 0 0.045 divided by 2 times 250. Okay? Or if you want to use the percentage value, this could be also written as negative 3.8 minus 4.5 divided by 200 times 250. Okay, so they will still give the same value of A, which is equal to negative 0 0.000166. And then for B, that's equal to G1, which is 0 0.045. And then we have C, which is the elevation of the beginning of the vertical curve. And since we do not know yet the elevation of the vertical curve, we have to solve for this value. So to solve for the elevation of our beginning of curve, or letter C, or C constant, what we will have to do is to determine or take into consideration this triangle. So for C, which is equal to EBPC, we now have, for the triangle, have your H, the length is L over 2, so that's 125. And we are given the grid of 0 0.045. So from this diagram, the grid is computed simply as 
your h divided by the horizontal. So, height over distance or that's the run of rise over run. So, h now can be computed as 0 0.045 times 125 or it will give us a value 5.625. And from here, we'll now be able to get our elevation of BPC since we are given the elevation of VPI. And since the point of intersection is higher than the VPC, then VPC now is computed as 40, the elevation of PI, minus your H. So, ito yung PI, ito yung beginning of curve. So, point na to, minus yung height. So, therefore, the elevation of the vertical point of curvature is now equal to 34.375 meters. So, we have solved our constant A, B, C. Therefore, our working equation for this problem will now become y equal to 0.000166x squared plus 0.045x plus 34.37. So from our derived equation, we have y equal to negative 0.000166x squared plus 0.045x plus 34.37. So, with this, we can now compute for our highest point of the curve. And we can solve for the highest point by applying the maximum minima from our calculus, which will simply be equating the first derivative of the equation to 0. And the first derivative now will be equal to negative 0.00166x times 2 plus 0.045. So if we simplify this, we'll be able to arrive at the value of x, which is 135.54 meters. And this one now is the location of our highest point along the horizontal. And if you're going to look at this value, this value now is greater than 125 meters. So meaning our highest point is not at the midpoint, but farther away the midpoint. Okay, so meaning our diagram a while ago was, or our assumption in the diagram was incorrect. So with that, knowing now the location, horizontal location of our highest point, we just simply apply x to the equation we have derived here to find the highest point or the vertical distance. So we now have y is equal to negative 0. 0, 0, 0, 0.000166 times 135.54 squared plus 0 0.045 times 135.54 plus 34.375, in which it will give us a value of y equal to 37.425. So this is now the elevation of our highest point. Okay, so we were able to get now the elevation. So with that. The location xy of the highest point, x is 135 and y is 37. So we can now draw our point in our diagram. So we have VPI station is at 20 plus 265. Our x is beyond L over 2. This is now 135, 54, 37, 45. So to solve now for the station of VPC, that will simply be equal to station of VPC will be 20 plus 265. You subtract L over 2. So this one, you subtract L over 2. That's 125. So we have now station of VPC is at 20 plus 140. And from VPC, we add now the x distance of the highest point. So the station of each p, highest point will now be 20 plus 140 plus x, which is 135.50. Our highest point or the station for the highest point is at 20 plus 275.54.
So we were able to compute now for the station as well as the elevation of our highest point through the parabolic equation. So by offset method for our solution, we first solve for the value of k, which is a measure of the curvature of our parabola. So for this, k now is equal to L over A, wherein A is simply the algebraic difference of our grades. So G2 minus G1 or G1 minus G2 since we will be taking the absolute value of their difference. Okay, so we're given L, we're given G2 and G1. We can now compute for K, which is equal to 30.12 meters. And then, after that, we now compute for X, which is simply computed as the value of K times the grade of, or our first grade, G1. So that is 30.12 times 4.5, which will give us x equal to 135.54. So do we have the same value as for the parabolic equation x? Yes. Then next, we now have our diagram, so the station of VPI here. So from here, we'll now be able to get our x. So this is now our diagram. And from here, we want to compute now for the value of y or the offset distance of our highest point to the grid. So the intersecting point dito of the grid and the location of our highest point. So we want to compute for y. And y now can be computed as our a times x squared divided by 200 times l. So we're given a, we have solved for a, we have solved for x, and we're given l, so we can compute for y. And y now is equal to 3.0497. Okay? So kung naka-percentage yung sa a natin, we have to divide it by 200. Pero kung naka times 100 tayo, yung decimal equivalent niya, then this will only be divided by 2L. Okay? So pag naka percentage, divided by 200L. Pag hindi naka percentage, divide it by 2L. Okay? So with that, we now have X and the value of y. So take note of these values. So we move on to the next step. So for the next step, given the value horizontal location of x and the offset distance of y, we now consider this triangle as well as this one. So to get now our required values for the station and the elevation, let us take note of this point. So this one is the elevation of point Z. I'll call this point Z. Okay, the location of the intersection of the offset and of the grid. Then we have at this point is the elevation of the highest point. We have here the elevation of your point of intersection. The distance from the beginning to the point of intersection is 125. Distance between beginning and the highest point is 135.54. Okay? So the distance between the elevation of EZ and highest point is 3.0497. Okay? So from here, using this triangle, we can now take or compute all our values. So EZ now is simply equal to 40 plus yung height na ito. Okay. And this height can be computed using 0 0.045 times this distance. 
which is 135.54 minus 125. Okay? So, easy now is equal to 40.47 or 3. So, for each T, highest point that is the elevation of EZ minus Y. So, the elevation of the highest point now is equal to 37.42 meters, which is almost the same as what we have computed in solution 1 by parabolic equation. Then, for your stations, it's the same procedure, station of VPC is equal to the station of the VPI minus 125 plus X, which is 135.54. So we get the station at 20 plus 275.54. Okay. So next, let's have an example. Another example. So an equal tangent vertical curve is to be constructed between an initial grade of negative 2% and a final grade of 1, positive 1%. The station of the v vertical point of intersection is at 3 plus 353.7 and its elevation is at 128 meters. So due to a street crossing the roadway, the elevation of the roadway would should be at station 3 plus 4146 and the elevation should be at 129.42 meters. So let us now design the curve by parabolic equation and by the offset method. So, okay. so this problem now is an example of a sag vertical curve. So we are moving from negative to positive. Okay. So in here, we are given our grid initial negative 2 and an upward grid of 1. We're also given the station of the PVI or the vertical point of intersection and its elevation as well. So using parabolic equation, we can now solve for L or L by the curve or the length by using point x, y, where in x, y now is point P, which is defined by the station 3, 414.6, and the elevation 129.42. So for our equation, again, general equation is y equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. So ito yung general equation natin. So in here, y is equal to 129.42 x is equal to 0. Point, so in distance natin is 0. 0.5 of the l or l over 2 plus 3414.6 minus the station of the vpi which is 3 plus 353.6 which Simplifies to 0.5L to 61. So, saan nang galing to? Nang galing siya dito. Diba, ang station of the highest point or station of T can be computed as VPI minus 0.5L plus X. So, mula dito, bumalik ako sa point of curvature plus yung Pag sinimplify natin, ito din lang siyang lalabas. Okay? So, with that, we can now write our equation as 129.42 plus A, which is a constant. X is 0.5L plus 61 squared plus B times X, which is 0.5L plus 61 plus C. So, next step is to identify now our constant A, B, and C. So, for our constants, A is equal now to G2 minus G1 divided by 2L. So, kung divided by 2L, meaning G2 and G1 are in, not in, percentage value. So, 0 0.01 minus negative 0 0.02 divided by 2L. L is unknown. 
So, for A, that will now be A, an equation. Next, B is equal to G1, which is equal to 0 0.02 negative. And C is equal to the elevation of the beginning curve. So, from triangle, ito yun, ito ha, sa triangle na ito. This is the beginning, this is PI. So the distance between them, vertical distance between them is defined by H. And the horizontal distance between them is given by L over 2. So we know that the elevation of the intersection is 128. And the elevation of BVC is unknown. So, But we know our grid which is 0 0.2. Or negative 0 0.2. So for H, that is now equal to 128. Since mas mataas si beginning of curve, we'll have to add it to the grid times the horizontal length between. With this, we simplify now C and apply ABC in our First equation, so we'll have 129.42 is equal to 0 0.015 over L, your A, times your X squared minus B times X plus C. Okay? So with this equation, we just simplify it by multiplying it to L over 0 0.15. Para mawala ito. So, walang fraction na constant. So, with that, we'll now have H628L is equal to, magka-cancel, so we'll have now 0.5L plus 61 squared minus L over 0 0.015 times 0 0.2. Distribute this to this value. So, we'll have negative 2 thirds L squared plus 81.33. And then plus 128 over 0 0.15 will give us a value of 8533.33L plus 2 thirds L squared. So looking at this, 2 thirds L squared will cancel out. So we could again simplify our equation. This now becomes 0 0.25L squared plus 61L plus 3721. Ayan. And that will now be transposing this to this side. We will get minus 176L equal to 0. Or simplifying, again, we have 0 0.25L squared minus 115L plus 3721. So we could stop at this equation and then we could apply now quadratic equation. Or we could still simplify this by dividing it by 0.25, so we'll get L squared minus 460L plus 148.84 equal to 0. So from here, applying your quadratic equation, since this is a quadratic formula, so we'll have now A is equal to 1, B is negative 460, C is equal to 14.884. Quadratic equation natin is negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Or L1 now can be computed as 35.023 meters. And another value of L2 is 424.977 meters. So please do not use shift solve in solving for your L because it could give you the wrong root that we are looking for. Okay, so for this, our length now to be used should be 424.977. If you use shift solve in your calculators, then it could give you the other root, then mali na yung solution ninyo or mali na yung sagot ninyo. So by offset method, what we want to do is to extend this line here of our grid so that there will be an intersection for we could get the offset distance of t 
to the grid, which is equal to y. Okay, so with that, we use this triangle now to solve for our values. So we have this distance is our y. So we have the elevation of the point of intersection at 128. And then this point is the elevation of your point P, which is 129.42. This distance is one half of L. So this one is 61. So where did this come from? So this came from x equal to 0 0.5 L plus 61. So saan nang galing yung 61 that came from uh, subtracting 414.6 and 353.6. Okay? So that's where 61 came from. So with these values, we can now solve for our required length. So we call this point, the lowest point, as point Z. And then this distance will be your Y of Z. Okay. So Y of Z can now be taken as 0 0.02 degree times its horizontal distance, 61, or that's equal to 1.22 meters. So from there, we'll now be able to get EZ, which is VPI minus YZ. So EZ is equal to 126.78. So minus since point Z is lower than VPI. Okay. So next we now compute for Y of P, this one, which is simply equal to EP minus EZ which is equal to 264 meters. Okay. So after computing for Y, which is 264 meters, and we were able to identify that XP is equal to 0 0.5 L plus 61. So solving now L by our offset of YP, so YP is equal to A, XP divided by 200 L. So divided by 200 meaning A is in percent form. That's now equal to 2.64 Y is equal to negative or 1 minus negative 2 times X which is 0.5 L plus 61 divided by 200 L. So multiplying the whole equation by 200 L and dividing it by 3, since 1 minus negative 2 is 3, the absolute value is 3. So we'll now arrive at 176 equal to 0.25 squared minus 61 L plus 3721. It's 176 L. Okay. So simplifying, we'll now have 0 0.25 L squared. Minus 115 L plus 3721 equal to 0, which is again in your quadratic form. So we could solve this by quadratic equation again. So A is 0.25, B is negative 115, and C is 3721. By quadratic equation, we now solve L equal to 4 to 4.977 meters, and the other one is 35.023 meters. So again, our governing length will be the 424.977 meters, which is almost the same as the first solution by parabolic equation. Okay, so for our stations, we can now compute this with our computed values of x. So for, we could solve this by tabular form. So we have your points, point of intersection, the point of curvature, and the point of tangency. So we have your stations and your elevations for each point. 
So for VTI, we're given the station 3 plus 353.6 at an elevation of 128 meters. So for VTC, the station will simply be 3 plus 353.6 minus our VPI minus 0.5 of the length, which is 42497. And this will give us a value of 3 plus 141.115. Okay, and then for VPT, that will simply be VPC plus our length that is now equal to 3 plus 566.085. And then for our elevations, so 128 VPC is higher. So we add now EVPI plus 0 0.2 times 0 0.5L, which is now equal to 132.25 meters. And then for VPT, that will be VPI plus the vertical distance between VPI and EVC, which is equal to 0 0.01 times the horizontal distance between them, which is now equal to 130.125 meters. So this is now our design of the curve. So our stations and our elevations will be what will define the curve under this conditions. Okay, so that's it for the introduction and review of your vertical parabolic curve. So thank you for listening. For your references, we have the following books and websites for vertical alignment.